Universal Genève is one of the most important companies in watch collecting. Though this wasn't always the case. Ten years ago, virtually no one outside of dedicated watch collecting circles had heard of the brand, its heyday being long in the past. Today, however, awareness has been raised by the likes of watch websites such as Hodinkee, as well as by retailers such as Analog Shift. Indeed, once you learn a bit more about the firm's contribution to the greater watchmaking world, you'll quickly understand the appeal of Universal Genève. First, let's discuss a bit of Universal Genève's history. Universal Genève was founded as Universal Watch in 1894 by Numa Descombes and Louis Perret, two horology students living in Le Locle. Tragically, just three years later, Descombes passed away, leaving Perret to partner with Louis Bertout, with whom he relocated UG to Geneva shortly thereafter in 1919. Although the brand thrived domestically under the leadership of Perret and Bertout, its global presence had yet to be established. Following Perret's death, his son joined the firm, bringing in a variety of investors who helped to expand the reach of Universal Genève manufacture. The first of the milestone watches came in 1934 at the company's first Baselworld exhibition, where it released an early dual pusher chronograph wristwatch, utilizing a double column wheel system, the very first generation of the iconic Compor line of chronographs. In 1936, following the tremendous success of the Compor, UG expanded its offerings, including the UniCompax, a dual-register chrono that would soon replace the Compor completely, and the Compax, the very first watch to include an hour totalizer. Today, of course, many chronographs feature triple-register displays with hour counters, but at the time, this was a novel concept that was quite revolutionary for the industry. Perhaps the best way to comprehend the magnitude of UG during this period is to recognize that their headquarters was located directly between that of Rolex and Patek Philippe, where it stayed for decades. UG was a major industry player. Through the 1930s and 40s, Universal Genève expanded its offerings to include a number of additional chronographs with minor refinements. It also added complications, such as Complete Calendar in 1943 and the Aero Compax model with a four-register layout. In 1944, in celebration of a half century of business, the Maison released the tri a triple calendar chrono with moon face. This unique design became, for a time, the brand's best-selling watch. In the early 50s, UG released the Polar Router, later named the Polar Router. This special watch, from the mind of legendary designer Gerald Genta, was issued directly to the Scandinavian airline systems, which needed an anti-magnetic timepiece for use in its North Pole crossing international routes. In 1955, the brand developed a micro-rotor movement with Buren Watch Co. that later outfitted certain Polar Router models. The movement type for which the model is most known today. The pole router design was striking and unique. With twisted lugs, a simple rounded case, and classic dial layouts often divided into sectors. This design recipe worked beautifully for an everyday, dressy, yet sporty watch, qualities that remain as beloved today by collectors as they were by casual buyers in the mid-20th century. Other reversions followed in its wake, such as the dive-ready pole router sub, the elegant pole router jet, and the advanced pole router electric. This era also coincided with their being worn by celebrities such as Nina Rin and Eric Clapton. Ultra-thin automatics, such as the Genta penned Golden Shadow, appeared in the 1960s, while 1968's Unisonic was produced in collaboration with Bulova. However, the onset of the quartz crisis in the 70s wrought havoc on the brand, and it appeared on the verge of bankruptcy. In 1989, it was purchased by Hong Kong-based Stellux Holding International Limited. While it continued to do business, its current production watches haven't lived up to the legendary pieces of the 30s through the 60s. Regardless, Universal Genève's heritage in chronographs and micro-rotor-based designs helped to establish its presence as a standout leader in the world of vintage watches. As you can see, there's a full range of Universal Genève pieces from the 1930s all the way to the present day, which capture, in essence, what Universal Genève is truly all about. With Breitling's acquisition of Universal Genève, it remains to be seen what the next chapter of the Universal Genève story will look like. But we can be sure that, from a historical perspective, the brand has left an indelible mark on the industry as a whole. And we can't wait to see what's next. To view our full range of Universal Genève offerings, be sure to head over to analogshift.com.